As we continue examining the habits and motivations behind your recurring digital givers, we have to ask a question. Is there any way to encourage them to give a little bit more? What if it was as simple as getting a lot better at saying thank you? I'm Bill Hobson, and that's our focus on this edition of the Giving Series. Hi, I'm Bill Hobson, and today we're addressing a pair of issues and questions that in many ways share a common solution. Again, the context for our conversation deals with the seismic shift in giving patterns among your church congregants. Simply put, people are giving online way more than they're giving in person. The writing of a check has largely been replaced by the sending of a text or the formulation of a recurring monthly digital gift. I know that's not breaking news to you, but like a pastor concerned that the congregation might not remember last week's message, let me take a moment to recap video number two where we asked an important question. Has the giving moment in your service or live stream become more informational than inspirational? By the way, if you missed that video, go take a look, okay? Today then, we explore ideas, or in the consulting world we can say strategies, for encouraging recurring digital givers to increase the amount of their recurring digital gifts. Let me say that one more time. Your church must have a plan for encouraging recurring digital givers to increase the amount of their recurring digital gift. Why? Well, because if you believe that giving is an act of worship, and if you believe that there is a spiritual benefit to celebrating the opportunity to give, and if you want your church family to give careful consideration to their giving, then accepting the set it and forget it approach to recurring digital giving is unacceptable. You see, in our lives, we set and forget our online payments for things like Netflix, utilities, Uber Eats, Spotify, you, you get the idea. But if that same mindset guides our giving to the Lord, we insult him and we short sheet the giver by not inviting, thanking, and even challenging them to give careful consideration to their offering. I missed the plate being passed, but in reality, my family switched over to online giving far before the pandemic. And I have to plead guilty to all too often overlooking the thoughtfulness that giving deserves. Like many of you, I've heard powerful stories and I've had my heart touched by a song or a message or both. And yet it really wasn't until I began thinking about this giving series that I saw my own reflection in the mirror and I knew I was missing the point. Are you? So here we are. Giving methodology has changed. Many churches have defaulted to information over inspiration, and online giving is often lost in the world of online subscriptions. So how can your church change that? Here we go. Number one, learn how to say thank you. Do you excel in the art of thankfulness? Did you know the number one reason someone doesn't give is that they aren't asked? But the number two reason is they never felt appreciated for the gift they did give. So what does this look like in practical form? Well, first, it means more than a simple throwaway line during the giving information moment. Hopefully by now I've convinced you that the offering belongs in the flow of worship with inspirational God stories as part of the moment. Adding 20 seconds of appreciation for the faithful support of the church is a great first step in showing appreciation. Are you ready to go a step further? Take a quiet, private moment to shake the hand and say thank you to the most consistent givers in your church. Now, hang on. Before you fall off your chair and head to the keyboard to fire off a did you bump your head email to me, please listen. This is not an encouragement to violate privacy or cross a line of violating the truly sacred boundary between giver and church leadership. I am not advocating that anyone needs to know the amount of giving. 
but I do recommend asking your financial department to recommend the names, names only, of those who give 15 or more times per year. That's it. From there, a brief conversation that includes, hey man, I want to say thank you for supporting the church so faithfully. I have no idea what you give, but I know that you do it on a really consistent basis, and we really appreciate it. That's it. There's no asking for anything. There's no awkward invasion. There's just a thank you. You see, too many ministries are known for being incessant askers, and too few are proficient thankers. Expressing gratitude will make a big difference for the giver, wondering if they're really an important part of the ministry. Number two, through a quarterly targeted email campaign directed to your recurring monthly digital givers, share a special God story they haven't heard anywhere else. Remind them that their support of the church helped make that story possible and invite them to consider increasing their monthly support by 3%. Share, thank, invite. Number three, put more thought into your online gift receipts. You know, I'm stunned by the number of churches and other ministries that allow the online donation vendor to simply send out a generic, your gift has been received receipt at the conclusion of a successful donation. That's an insult to the giver. Do they matter or don't they? Every gift must be met by a heartfelt, customized, personalized, localized thank you receipt message. A new message should be written every month and returned to the giver the moment their donation is processed. Back in the days when snail mail was the easiest and most common route for reaching out, the uh, fundraising motto was out the door in 24, referring to getting the thank you in the mail within the next day. Well, that window is gone. It's far smaller now. If you want your church to be thought of in a different light than Amazon or Walmart, then get better with saying thank you. Let me close with an example of a real-life idea of how these ideas can benefit your church. For the last few years, my wife has served on the development team of a rescue mission near our home. I actually created the concept for her job, and here it is. She thanks donors. That's it. On the phone, through the mail, special events, personal visits, she never asks for anything. She says thank you. She says thank you for helping change lives. And the results have been powerful, both from a giving standpoint, as well as overall involvement as volunteers and cheerleaders for the ministry. Friends, it takes a tender heart to be a faithful giver. When someone commits to supporting your church on a regular basis, they're saying, I believe in what's happening here and I want to be a part of it. Thank them. Thank them often. Thank them well. As we now come to the end of the third installment in the giving series, I would like to turn to you for some help and guidance on where we go next. What would you like to see us address? Simply send us an email at thegivingseries at gmail.com and let us know what's on your heart or maybe what your leadership team is wrestling with these days when it comes to stewardship and giving and offering and all of the things that we've been through in the last three videos. And we'll let you help us shape where we go next. Thank you for being part of this important discussion. Thank you for taking part in the Giving Series. <music>